What's up, everyone? This is David, A.K. Reverse Long, and I'm here with Maya Trades and Reed Hernwich, Reed Golf 19. Um, yeah. And we're here to do like a summary of the year kind of thing. I'm about to go to Japan in a couple of days and then to India mm -hmm. to go see Reed do his thing over there. He's getting uh, he's got something personal going on over there. And sure. um, yeah, we're here to talk about what's what's uh, how everything has gone so far and First of all, I've never had Reed and Maya together on the podcast, you know, um, so maybe like a brief background on yourselves. And let's start, I guess, with Maya, you know, you're the uh, ladies first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what do you want to know? Just a little background about myself? Yeah, a little background. You know, I see you on, on Twitter. You're pretty popular over there. You know, you're always fishing and posting photos of this this uh, tiny little dog. I think it's a dog, right? It's like a... <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little <laughs> <laughs> polar bear yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll just kind of get started um i've been buying and selling stocks for a little over 10 years since high school um i used to take my lifeguarding paycheck and just buy like large cap stocks like apple microsoft etc and i would just hold them and my grandpa was the one that actually got me into the market he showed me you know you buy a stock you can hold it for a long time and you know, as the company grows and the market goes up, you can make a lot of money. And so I've always just enjoyed stocks. And then maybe five years ago, I started actively like buying and selling stocks on a regular basis and took it more serious. And I've just kind of grown from there. I'm primarily a small cap long trader. Um, I do dabble in large caps a little bit, but I would say my edges are in the small cap game. And just trade, you know, a few different edges I have based off filings, different offerings, catalyst plays, and um, Reed's become a very good colleague of mine, and we've just kind of taken it off together. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And so, so, Reed, how about you? You've gotten into this whole because we've done a lot of, like, the trade reviews. So, so check this out, guys. So, like, Reed and I, from, in January, we did, a, we did a podcast to start the year. Reed was primarily, he was basically all short. And then we did like every Sunday, we would do a trade review of the week for like six months, mm -hmm. uh, every week. We didn't miss any weeks. If you look at that, it's an incredible catalog of the way we trade shorts. And I still trade like that. Uh, but Reed decided, because this market has been tricky with short selling, as we see from all like the Kimfo verified traders that are mostly short sellers, everybody's having a tough year. And uh, this year, especially for systematic short sellers and just short sellers in general, as we've mm -hmm. seen, like the, the borrow fee rates have been incredibly erratic and all over the place. So swinging these things have been tough. Um, you have a lot of weird stuff going on with the Chinese stocks like they have, the, for example, the Chinese stocks have been uh, predictable for a certain part of the year. And then they got erratic and super squeezy and blew up a lot of people for a certain part of the year. Gave everyone a hard time, including Reed um, mm -hmm. and I, 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 you know, for, I had a, one of my biggest losses and my biggest loss ever came on a Chinese stock um, this year. But yeah, so Reed has uh, shifted more to going long uh, really these these penny plays. And he, you know, he, he found Maya online. They were and now he's shifting towards that direction for now in, in this market. <laughs> for what's going on so yeah read um so yeah let's tell us okay so how did i sum that up uh yeah. right yeah what do you think yeah you did overall um you know as we go into this i'll just say of course i was a short seller always and now i haven't really done many shorts at all lately i plan on doing more short trades next year if you ever talk about our goals of course next year i want to get back into short selling you know david you and i we we made a lot of money very quickly uh, doing the strategies that, that we have and that you still implement very, very well. Um, but what I, what was happening with me is I could not find a way to avoid um, the big loss, right? And things got a little bit more unpredictable this year with shorts. And rather than thinking about one, two, three, four things, we were thinking about 10 to 15 things and clouded some judgment, clouded my mind. And then eventually I just said, you know, I'm just going to kind of um, start some of these longs, le learn how to how to trade long, not thinking I would make a lot of money doing it, but just um, try to find some relationships with some people in different areas of the market. 
found Maya. Uh, I've learned a lot from Maya. I think we've learned from each other. And David, you know better than anybody when you have a couple minds together, hashing back and forth, sharing your opinions. It's almost like, you know, business partners where you can, um, you just have that extra bit of conviction. That's why we have our the trading groups, right? You have that extra bit of conviction. It allows you to size into the ones that you're supposed to. It allows you to hold on to some trades um, where normally you might sell them for 5%. You might end up making 20, 25. Um, so yeah, I, I had to change because I could not avoid the big loss. And it doesn't matter if you're winning 95% of your trades. If you have one huge loss, you know, five huge losses out of 100, basically I was treading water, you know, green, but nowhere near where I wanted to be. So that's why I made the changes. Gotcha. Okay. So, so read, uh, and a little, okay. So uh, maybe a little background, a uh, very brief, uh, on yourself. So you came from golf, uh, you know, and you real estate and then now you're doing trading. That's yeah. basically it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Golf. Professional golfer, uh, a little bit, college golf, and then worked my way into real estate, made all of my money uh, in real estate, worked really hard income wise so that I can put it into all of uh, all of the trading and investing. And, you know, now I have uh, still have my my real estate stuff that I do no longer a realtor, but, you know, analyzing a lot of deals and properties. And then on top of that, analyzing companies and trades. So I'm kind of it's all the all the same. It works together. I just got my screens. And uh, the, the number one thing I would I would just, you know, of course, the reason we're here is to share with everybody how we're doing. But um, when you have a collective group, like in real estate, you're going to have to have a business team that's going to handle all different types of things. And you want multiple people sharing their opinions. And that's why in trading, I just tell everybody, don't don't get into a group and just try to leech off, you know, everybody and just get the information and see what they're doing build actual genuine relationships with a few people that you can trust. And even if you're making money or not, at least you're doing it with somebody and you know, you're on the right steps to get where you want to be together. So David, I've always liked you your trust. You're a good guy. Maya, I like you. You're a great woman. And that's why, you know, we're all here, here talking, um, regardless if, if we're making a bunch of money or not, you know? Right. I think just to piggyback off that a little bit, I think this year, more than ever, since so many have struggled in the market compared to the last, you know, several years, I think it's really shown a lot of people's true colors. And I think we've learned on keeping our circle small, full of people we trust because, you know, true colors are shown during tough times. And if a trade goes wrong and you see someone's true colors, it's like, that's not someone you want to be associated with. And um, Reed has been, has grown to be one of, very few that I trust a lot. Like if I need to go out of town and don't have service, I trust him handling a trade I'm in knowing he'll make the best decision for me. And I know that money's not going to go off somewhere in China. So <laughs> that's right. Maya. Yeah. I, I can speak to that as well. You know, um, yeah. Reed always had my back when uh, I was like traveling or didn't have my eyes uh, fully there on the markets and vice versa, you know? So yeah, it's always good. Right. Relationships are, are, really key uh, i've i've thrived off of the relationships i've developed with the podcast with like my time in puerto rico a trade space and yeah i i love it i was just talking about it the other day with um someone i was having dinner with here in la it's like man i love the friends that i've gotten from trading man you know this is the best you know because all the people i associate with now they're all successful in their own right and like successful people is what you want to be around you know so you know it's it's just uh, your your network is your net worth you know what i mean and and the thing is and i for me it means a lot because i came from a background in architecture where people my age my colleagues were always bitter they were always brokies you know uh, everyone was student loans and everyone's like cynical and and you know the vibes were not the same, you know, and like now I come to trading and like when I'm you're dealing with people that have had success, you know, um, it's it's a different it's like a higher frequency all the time. Like, I, I love it, you know, so I'm just <laughs> really, really happy that I met you guys. You know what I mean? And and uh, just everybody I've connected with over the podcast and stuff, you know who you are. So, 
yeah, it's it's definitely the relationships. Whoever's listening to the podcast, if you're if you're starting to get profitable, whatever, yeah, the next thing would be to like develop some relationships, you know. Um goes a long way with trading, you know what I mean? So it's trading, it's uh it's it's stressful. Like re- re- remember, so just recently, or like you no, know, I was in New York and it's crazy. I was in New York taking uh photos for the Nasdaq DAS competition, whatever. At the same time, I had like my biggest loss ever. And yeah, and uh, I hit up Reed and Reed, you know, he, we talked it over. It's always good to have a buddy to go over the, you know, uh, be there right. for you during the losses, the big losses and stuff like that. And uh, we've been through that a few times. But um, Absolutely. Um, I always like to explain it as like-minded people. You know, you said successful people, but it's like a lot of people that have the same vision. And when you find people that also have the same values, I think it like, it's really a great combination. And then, like you said, the highs and the lows. A lot of people, at least for me in my personal life, no one else does this, you know, reads now in my personal life. And I consider him like one of my best friends, but like, I don't just have my best friends, like no, none of them trade or buy and sell stocks. So it's just like, they can't relate if, you know, I'm, I've had a rough day or a great day, they don't understand it. So it's like nice having those people to celebrate the wins and also like, just understand the losses with you. Absolutely, man. Well said. Well said, Maya. So, okay, mm-hmm. guys. So, about the year, you maybe want to give us some up of the year and what you guys are looking to do next year. What What are you anticipating? Sure. Do you want me to go first, or you read? Maya, take it away. Okay. Um, I am very, very pleased with this year. I will say the start of the year was a different shift in small caps than you know the last few years we've had. So it was definitely just an adjustment and I've learned a lot of new edges and I feel like I've gotten a lot better at risk management and making my losses smaller than they were in the past. And so I would, I would say the beginning of the year was more slow. It was just different. And I sized down a lot just to protect my capital, but I would say, you know, like the past seven, eight months or so have just completely taken off and I'm more excited than ever to just start 2023 strong. And I think it's going to be my best year yet. And I'm, I'm focused on it being my best year yet. Awesome. So Maya, um, you've been trading for a while. You said when we started for like 10 years or something. So like towards the end of the year, like in the, in previously, like last year and 2020, how was it for you? Like, was it the same process that you're going through? Like, okay, you're kind of closing the year strong and waiting to start next year. Is it always been like that? Yeah. Um, so I say 10 years because it's always difficult to answer the question because it's like I've been kind of buying and selling stocks, but I would say like actively trading every day where it's based, you know, it's my full time gig. I was in medical sales before, um, but I would say it's been like three years of just full on making it my daily life. But um, yeah, I would say, you know, there's highs and lows throughout the year. Some months are flat, some months are red. Um, and then you have extremely green months, but I would say like the pattern is usually end of year is really strong. Um, end of summer and slow can be fall, uh, or end of summer and fall can be slow. But I would say for this year, that was not the case. Like I would say the end of summer and the fall has been my best part of the year. Um, and just learned a lot, you know, Reed and I have been killing it together. And so I love to see other people winning as well. And I've noticed those around me are winning. So it's just, it's been, it's been a great end of the year. Yeah. What about you, Reed? What do you, what do you think? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty happy with, uh, how the year has gone. I think you can attest to this, David, but ever since I took big losses, uh, October, November of 2021, I took some time off, really just kept working so hard at coming back and, you know, taking all of our strategies and fine tuning them. I'm very analytical. Like, what do I need to do better? What do I need to do better? And then I would do better and it'd be like three, four or five weeks of great, great, great. And then one big loss, five weeks of great, one big loss. And I was lost, you know, for the first five, six months of the year. And I knew that I wanted to shift and do some other things. And David, as you know, I started um, my hedge fund. So I also wanted to find ways to hold stocks longer and let them at the plays actually play out so that I didn't have to be active every second of all day, tick, tick, tick. And I could really maybe take more time analyzing and watching a whole trade play out and go a bit larger on, in size on each of those plays, uh, which has been nice. And I'll say at the beginning, it was fine 
but it, it, it didn't start taking off until month, you know, three, four, five of really learning all of this and putting it into play. And that's probably how, how anything is. Um, so now the last couple months have been, you know, amazing kind of, you know, my best months I've had ever kind of tied with that, but I'm way more educated, as you know, David, now than I was when I was having those good months before. It's kind of like I, I didn't know as much and it helped me, you know, make money back then. Um, so going into 2023 20, now, I want to be very, very disciplined uh, with the plays that uh, we are doing. I, I, I still feel like even a month ago when I was making money, I was getting in too many tickers at once. And now it's like focusing on one or two or three really good trades, sizing in appropriately, and knowing that we've done so much due diligence on that ticker that it's it's a slam dunk. Like that's that's where I want to be, and I want to size up into those plays which we've been doing. And uh, so that that that's what I would say. And then the other thing, David, which we we all do is we have got to keep our win percentage in the nineties. Um, that is imperative. I. I I understand that some traders do very well winning 50, 60, 70% of the time. Um, I don't handle losing, you know, very well with, with, with anything, you know, I try my best, but I, I would like to keep winning and, and, you know, keep that 95% or so win percentage. So that's kind of how I'm looking at the end of the year and the next year. Awesome. And uh, yeah, you just mentioned that about like, I had to, I've, I've looked into that as far as my personality too. Like what, these 90 percent win rates you know we've th we've talked about it before you know you me our salon this is like abnormal we we have and like i was thinking about it a lot recently about the other things in my life like i just don't like losing man i i don't like losing at anything i like to be very efficient i like to be like a sniper at almost everything if you go to like my apartment everything is what is like i've thought about everything i've bought like the use for it everything is a business write-off everything is this or, like everything i own is like when i go ask for dates with with girls or whatever i <laughs> I'm very selective i go i i'm very analytical mm -hmm. i'm like all right I, i'm I, you know just for the best shot at the best time the best that you know it's like the, the yep. type i know exactly what i'm looking for so like and and i just don't handle uh losing is in in, in, in basically anything you know like everything i buy like when i buy some clothes i don't want the clothes to i want to be something that's going to be used i'm not going to buy clothes and just let it sit there like everything has to be yeah. not wasteful like wasting trades i i don't do like a loss just to cut the loss like i i wouldn't even you know it's just like is it is are you the same way because i know you play golf and golf is very efficient you got to be like it's all I don't know how you do it, but yeah, like, no. you, know, you can't. Yeah. So like, as a, so how would you describe that, man? Every, so there's, there's a lot of different, remember I studied psychology too, but everything that is done is calculated and it has a specific level of intent. And that's how you get into a trade. Every decision that I make for the most part in my life has this level of intent where I've thought about everything, right? The choice that's going to be made. It's even the small ones or the really big ones, which is what you're talking about. A lot of people with different personalities, type B and certain things are more free, you know, free balling and just kind of let um, let things, uh, you know, you fly by the seat of your pants and you react to your environment. Right. Whereas, you know, that's not that's not what we do. We control our own environment. And that's how we are. I think that's why you, you, it's tough to take uh, tough to take losses at times. Maya, I'd like you to chime in here too, because I know, you know, I guess I don't know. I can't answer for you, but I think you would be more along our lines for sure on that, right? Yeah, it's definitely something I've worked on. Um, I will say singles and doubles on Twitter. He's a great follow because he's all about, he's a small cap trader. He's all about risk management and just cutting your losers quickly. And I will say like over the years, just him instilling that I have gotten a lot better because like Reed, like our win, people think we're like lying, but our, our win ratio is in the middle to upper nineties. But when we do have a loss, it's something that's unexpected and it, we can get it, let it get a little out of control. But I will say the last six months of the year, we've really been good about just cutting losers quicker and just moving on to the next, making the money back somewhere else, but also not rushed. 
and just not letting those things get out of control. And something that's helped me a lot is just position sizing. Um, you know, I know what I'm willing to risk before I enter a trade now. Um, I will never, ever put more than 10% of my account into a trade, no matter if I think it's a slam dunk or whatever. And most of the time, even on a great trade, I'm putting in less than 5% of my capital. And that's kind of my risk parameter because it's like, even if something crazy was to happen, that's 5% of my account. You know, like we're often late or often we've been having crazy months. So it's just like, in retrospect, I never want to lose that much on a trade. Um, I will say though, I'm just like you guys, I hate losing. And if I have a thesis, I'm really stubborn. So I don't, you know, I don't yeah. like to be wrong or lose like you guys said, but I will say this year more than ever, I've been better on just like accepting it before it gets out of control. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, that's one thing I did. So this year I managed it pretty well for the most part, except one time <laughs> I had a really big loss one time, but for the most part, I was able to keep those position sizes and things under control up until then. And, and last year, uh, I wasn't as good as that. And I think Reed, um, you've managed to do, to figure it out on the long side with that. Cause like you've had those, that those issues maybe with the yes. shorts and now with the longs, that's why you're enjoying the success with the longs. That, you know? that, that is, that is why I, um, I, I do find it easier also when you're working on entries into a long position. And if that, if that play is not a scalp for five minutes, if it's more of like, a day or two hold it's easier to be just a little bit down on a position and know that you have room to to add into it kind of like we do well above vwap david on, on a short but but i know if it's going against me that the thesis is there it's not going to get out of control it's a long a lot of these stocks are at potentially all-time lows already and uh there's just a lot of upside so yeah when i'm going to bed at night holding something overnight i'm not sweating anymore i feel okay like i and the thesis is intact. But I'll tell you what, if the thesis is no longer intact, and if you're asking yourself, would I get into this trade right now? And if the answer is no, I really feel like I can cut it now. I don't think I could have, you know, a year ago, especially on a stubborn short trade. Um, so there's that's an improvement, I guess, in its own. Yeah. Uh, What's yeah. that, Maya? No, I was just, just going to say, we're very, very picky with what we trade now. And, you know, I'll trade stuff on the side, but especially what I put out as a trade idea on my Twitter, like, I don't think people understand there's like a reason for it. And I'm not just shilling a random ticker or a random penny. I have a thesis. I've tried to educate a lot on Twitter, you know, the last several months, but um, I'm not going to put everything out there. There's edges for a reason. But when I'm putting something out there, it's not just random. And I want to have great risk to reward trades, especially for people that are taking my trade ideas on Twitter, because I probably care a little bit too much to be a Twitter pumper or whatever, you know, you want to call me, but it's like, I want people to win. And unfortunately, not everyone can win in this game, but I feel like if you follow what I preach, you should know what's good risk, what's good reward. And another thing to piggyback off Reed is, um, we're often not even full size before our stock goes because we size into these positions. So it's like, even if it dips or is down 10% or whatever, it's like, well, we're not even at the size that we want to be at yet. So it's like, it's just a different parameter, but we definitely have metrics. That's like, okay, this trade's a cut, but yeah. um, I will say we've just been really good at being picky on what we want to trade. Yeah, sure. awesome. You you mentioned the Twitter. I've been uh, peeking at you guys' Twitters, and I, I you know I I was going along a little bit here and there of what you guys uh, were putting out, but you know, <laughs> but it's it's actually very helpful. I was experimenting with it with, uh, you know, a few thousand dollars here and there, and like it was all right. You know, it was it was good. Got some Brazilian yeah. steakhouse a couple times. You there, know? You there you go, David. Yeah, so, there you go. <laughs> but um, but no, actually, you guys put out real stuff on Twitter. Like, I, yeah, like you said, my, like, you, you know, you, you, you seem to care about it. It's not just fluff. It's not, not just some right. random stuff, throw and see what sticks. It's so it's well thought out. And yeah, it's not your edge. Like you're not going to give your edge to you because you know, you don't want, like for me, 
um, in my Discord, I say I I don't talk much intraday about my positions. I don't want to get my squeezed. You, I don't want yes. my own people to get to squeeze me. So it's like, and I, I don't like when someone asks, "What's your what's your average?" Like, come oh, on, man. Like, wh- why? What? How, what good does that do anybody? Yeah, so get me squeezed. Uh, there's gonna be because there's like 300 people there. There's some lurkers. There's probably some whales lurking, and like waiting. Some might want to plan a squeeze this is the market you know everybody's for themselves you got to manage your risk and like you said my i mean some you know it's not for everybody you know but if you're there and you're you're managing risk and you're doing your dd and you're you're taking this serious yeah those ideas are are really good they're good ideas you know it's like um i have a friend uh uh, re knows him too you know he has a couple of analysts and they they give him ideas every morning Say, oh look, these these are the potential whatever, and it, 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 really, and he pays for that service. You know, you guys are giving really solid tickers to like consider and do some, you know, presenting it. I don't know, you know, it's if I'm sure if I would have a focus, and I think Reed, you try to get you try to get me to focus on it. Uh, it, I could figure it out too, you know. It's like okay, for sure, yeah. for sure. Uh, um, another thing I want to touch on before I forget, just piggybacking off that again is. A lot of big Twitter accounts that blew up in 2020, they don't know certain rules. They don't know when a reverse split is going to be. They don't know which companies can randomly drop a reverse split. They don't know when there's open offerings. And, you know, in 2020, the buying volume exceeded all of that. So it didn't even really matter whatever you pumped if you had enough followers. But it's like, that's something that's like really important to me is like, if I'm posting something, it is pretty much a safe play unless it's an anomaly because I want the risk to reward to be there for everyone. And it's like, I've done the DD, I've read through the filings. I am not gonna put out something that, you know, has a potential to just lead everyone to the slaughterhouse. And I think a lot of Twitter accounts have lost credibility this year because they're just willing to pump anything, not really knowing, you know, what's going on in the background. And I'll say that's something that Reed and I really focus on. Yeah, well okay. said, uh, you d- you guys definitely know the filings really well. and. Um... And I, I've I've gotten some. I think Reed knows it better than I do now. I I, I ask him for like my filing questions. I go to him, and um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's hardcore. Um, also, was crazy. I just thought of it before the year started. One of my goals was to go long because I never did a long in like five years. I actually went long. Can you believe that? It's like you nothing. did a few times. A few yeah. times. It's nothing. No. To me now. It's nothing. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy. So. Um, all right. So what's next? Let's see. What's your, what's your guys most memorable trade? Let's see. Wh- however you want to take it, maybe this year or all time. Or... I, sure. Maya, Maya can go. Um, so my most memorable trade was, you remember when AMC was at like the low $2 and it started getting pumped. Um, I scalped it with size or I guess day traded it because I held it to the end of day bell and I made like, almost $80,000. I want to say it was $78,000. So awesome day trade, you know, but I'm going to take my gains. Well, the next morning I wake up and I'm checking my phone and AMC's at 26 pre-market. And I'm like, I'm like refreshing my phone because it closed maybe around 270, 280, something. It was upper twos. Yes. I saw right at the closing bell. So I'm waking up and I'm like, what is going, like my broker is like glitching. So I, I'm checking like multiple brokers. I'm checking like it on Google. And I'm like, Oh my God. So I get on and I see like it squeezed and like, I wasn't upset or anything, but I always say that was like my, like shoulda, woulda, coulda, like huge trade. It would have been over $4 million more. In oh profit my God. If I would have just held overnight and it's like, I wasn't mad, but I was just kind of like in shock. Like I didn't believe it. So that one, like, and that was the first squeeze, you know, that was to 26. That wasn't the squeeze after that, but I still kind of think it's funny that apes think it's still going to squeeze, but they don't like to like let go. Um, but yeah, that was probably my most memorable trade. What what made you get an EMC at that? That's before the whole mania. Yeah, it was being pumped and it just had a lot of volume that day. And um, that was when, you know, volume plays were working great. Um, I think Zach Mor- Yeah, it was Zach Morris. He was pumping it. And I know that guy gets a lot of hate, but he brought the volume like no one in 2020. And you could scalp, swing, short, whatever you wanted to do. And he was like a great scanner. So 
Um, I have respect for that guy. I know a lot of people don't, but I, I highly respect the guy. And yeah, I think it was him, him and a few others that started pumping it and it just got crazy volume. That's crazy. So do you think if you would have, because I've spoken to a few like regular people that made money on AMC and that, and like they ended up losing it all. Do you think that would, for you, it wouldn't have oh, been no. the case? I, I would have <laughs> woke up at 26, started dumping my shares right away. Like I'm, I'm not greedy though. I've gotten to the point where it's like, yeah, like I'll call Reed and be like, oh, like, did you see what X, Y, Z is at? Like, you know, we would have made 50% more or whatever, but it's just like, once you get to become a profitable trader and take this so serious that this is your life, you're going to realize you're not always going to time the top. You're rarely going to time the top and the bottom in a trade. And so it's like, as long as you get a nice slice in the middle, like um, at the end of the day, I wasn't even really pissed about AMC. I was happy. I made almost 80 grand in a day trade. You know, that's a phenomenal day. And yeah, I could have made a lot more, but it's just like, it is what it is. I like in hindsight, I did the right thing, taking my profits, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You did the right thing. Um, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush for one. Um, so I like to think of, you know, I like baseball. Baseball resonates with me. I played most of my life and I watched a lot of it. And like, I, even to this day, like I see a lot, well, I, not this year, but like in the past to see hit, traders hitting home runs, for example, and like big trades and snap. And I'm like, you know, at this point in my trading journey, I'm good at like singles and doubles. I'm just going to do that all day long. And that's, that's why you you see like on my verified stats, like you see those small wins and some medium wins and stuff. And like when I met Reed, um, when we first connected and did that podcast last year, I don't know, March or something, um, mm -hmm. it was cool to see someone that traded like me. That's how we got in contact because he was the same way. He was hitting those singles, doubles, you know, those those halt plays, and uh, and all that adds up. You know, you take your wins, you take and it it adds up. You know, so. But now, now Reed's gravitated towards like you're kind of hitting home runs now. You, you guys, yeah. <laughs> I will but, say, uh, I'll say you never, in hindsight, regret taking profit. But I've had a few trades in my career that still not haunt me, but they linger. Like I don't remember all the profitable, awesome trades unless they were crazy. I've had you know a few crazy ones, but I don't remember the trades that I took profit on. But I do remember the trades, and I could name a few that I was up very green on and I just got greedy and thought, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then they like, I was swinging them and they like gapped down overnight or there was an unexpected offering or whatever. And it's just like, I think about that now, like, wow, I was up an insane amount of money, you know, more than most people's salary in a year. And I let that go red. Like I didn't scale out more, et cetera, whatever the issue was. And so it's like, I have just learned, take your slice, get out, and it's not going to haunt you if you missed a little bit, you know? Yeah, absolutely. The, yeah. yeah. What about you, Reed? Any memorable trades this year well, or last year? Maybe, yeah. Uh, not that many memorable trades, I will say. David, when you take singles and doubles, you know, all last year, shorting, there's not very many memorable trades, I will say that. I think I gave this same answer I'm about to give, by the way, last year when we talked about this. This year, some more memorable wins, right? Things have switched up. You get some 50, 60, 70, 80 percent runners. But um, outside of that, I just want to say the reason that I take a lot of, I guess, now they're doubles and triples. They're not singles because, you know, we want to let these run. We, we don't want to sell into, you know, other people. And when we're telling them a good play, we want it to run. We want everybody to win big. So, um I have this systematic process already laid out of if I do X amount of trades, if I have this specific position size relative to the account, if I win this much and if I risk this much per trade and I, I will know at the end of the day, how many trade, uh, how much money I'm going to make at the end of the year. So when the stock ends up running crazy, I'm fine because I have a systematic process in which I'm going to be within those, um, within those means. So I always say that you need to know those five things that I just mentioned. And if you're struggling in one of those areas, like for me, it was my percentage of, of my size of my losses. You got to go figure that out. If it's your frequency of trades and you're trading too much, you got to figure that out. If you're not letting your winners run and you're taking 2% profits when the max move on a trade is a hundred percent, you got to look at that. Um, and you got to do the numbers to know what you're doing every day is going to yield you what you want at the end of the year, because a lot of people just trade, they just trade and they organically let it all happen. 
I think it's good to be discretionary like we all are, but within this systematic approach of knowing if we do X, X, and X, this is where we're going to be at the end of the year. So that's kind of like analyzing a real estate deal, right? I always know at the end of the year what the returns will be if this is going to happen. So that's how I look at the trading too, which takes some of the memorable trade fun maybe out of it, but it, it adds up over time, right? You, you, you've you woken up to a few, like, don't let him discount. Yeah. He, he was more of like a short scalper, yeah. but he's woken up yeah. to a few pennies that ran several hundred percent this year with me. Yes. So <laughs> I read, okay, KPRX, um, KPRX and Kern are two. I woke up, I had positions in the 10 cent range and they were in the twenties. So it's like, that's a hundred percent plus. So those are memorable, very memorable trades. You, you're right. And, uh, but I was going to let Maya, you know, hang her hat on the memorable trades. And I was going to be this more, you know, systematic, you know, approach, but either way works. So Maya, what do you think of Reed's uh, systematic process and all that? Is, is it like a little intense? Like, you know, do you go about it the same way? No, I would say like, we're like, we're a very good blend is what we've learned. Um, he is very, very systematic and I've gotten to become more systematic. And, you know, we track all this data. Um, we use several different metrics for that. And we're constantly learning off each other. Like if I have a question about something in a filing, I call him, I'm like, hey, what do you think this is? Because I just want to ensure it before I think it's a good long and he'll do the same. And we kind of, it's just nice to have that backup as like someone I really trust. Um, you know, knowing that he's the same way and he's super analytical, he's super goal oriented. And um, I think we just mesh well together. Like it's pretty much it. <laughs> awesome. Like, yeah. um, we have, we have fun too. Like we that's we important. Yeah. yeah. Having fun is important and making money is fun, but um, just having fun with everything uh, is, is obviously important, David, as you know, yeah, I probably have like, I probably have too much fun on my Twitter because I'll get messages from my parents that follow me somehow and be like, really Maya, that tweet. And I'm like, you know what? I'm almost 26 year old, years old, successful. I don't need my parents texting me about my finance Twitter account. Yeah, my, <laughs> yeah, my, my mom watches my Instagram. Yeah, my, I've, I've cleaned up my Instagram act though. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> um, okay, so what about like next year? Uh, being like the importance of being prepared for this market. Cause like, um, this is like a bear market now. So you, you guys have made a switch, I guess, Maya, you know, you traded a lot of this stuff in 2020, 2021, when it was, a, I guess it was easier. And then now it's like, you've shifted and just like, you, did you hone down more in the filings this year? What did you do to prepare yourself? So you protect yourself in this, in this, uh, for different sure. market. Like, I mean, you, you're going to have, um, and this is what I tell people all the time. So you constantly need to evolve. The market's changing. Edges we have now, are we going to have six months from now? I'm not sure. You know, I hope so. I love like what we're trading right now. And a lot of, we trade a lot of stuff in silence too, that are a little bit more risky that we don't want to put out for followers. I try and keep it really easy for followers to follow. Um, but absolutely. We're just constantly adapting, constantly learning more. There's two types of people. There's going to be People that just, you know, are following Twitter accounts and yeah, you can do great for a little while, but what are you going to do when you're in a play and the filing drops and, you know, the stock tanks and you don't even know what's going on. There's going to be the people that, you know, are constantly learning and always getting better. And I tweeted something about this the other day, anything I have done in my life, I've done it with excellence and that I can just, I guess, toot my own horn is I work really hard and I always want to be getting better. So I'm not content. You know, I love the strategies that Reed and I have, but we're constantly like, okay, let's learn this about these type of warrants and let's look at these types of conversions and let's dig mm -hmm. a little bit here. And it's just like, we're never just content with what we currently have because our edges can be taken away and we just want to get better and better. And so I think going into 2023, it's like, you know, I have a lot of goals and I don't share my goals publicly for the most part, but part of them just includes learning and um, building on top on top of what we've created going into 2023 and just, I'm really focused on it being my best year yet. And I think, you know, that it will be the case. Awesome. Yeah. I love that you, you touched on excellence, doing everything with excellence. And I, that 
reminded me of like when Reed and I did the Misfits podcast. Yeah, I we, I spoke about that. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm about yes. excellence. And Reed is like a high performing person in everything he's done, real estate, golf, uh, hedge fund now, trading, you know. So, yeah, it's it's just a, doing everything with excellence, you know, doing it at a high level. This game is like because um we're competing against the smartest people, you know, the and the, mm-hmm. the with a lot of rich people that are smart with a lot of money that are shady and want to take your money, you know? So yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta strive for excellence in everything you do with this and, and treat it very, you know, with, uh, put a lot of work in read the filings, you know, do your due diligence and wake up early. You have a, yeah, it takes a lot of everything's got to do with excellence for sure. I, I tweeted something about it today is like this year has also shown like, you can help people out personally. Now, I'm not talking about Twitter. I'm talking about like in your personal life. I have helped a ton of people make low key, make a ton of money. And when one thing goes wrong, they're entitled and they're greedy. And it just shows their true intentions. And it's like, I've seen that so many times over the years. It's like, you know, you have a friend or whatever, an acquaintance, and they want to get into trading. And out of the kindness of your heart, you help someone. But, you know, say you have 10 green trades and they're, let's say they're up $50,000 and then you have a trade and they lose $3,000, but they're not used to losing. It's like you see the nastiness or whatever. And it's just like, I've told, I tell Reed all the time, greed and entitlement. That is something I cannot stand from lazy people when it's like, you know, you have a couple people doing all the work and then you have a few that are freeloading and then want to cast blame or do whatever. And it's just like, that's why we've really honed in on it being, you know, the Reed and I duo. Yeah. 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 We and, um, that. yeah what's that? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm going to add something to that because um, so, and I've touched on the psychology of different things at different times, because of course, like attitude is my, it's the most important word. It's what my dad has, has instilled in me forever is the word attitude and your self perception. Um, so at the end of the day, as human beings, a lot of us want to deflect blame on others all the time. We want to look at others and, uh, find reasons to take that blame off of ourselves. But at the end of the day, every single day, whether your life is great or trading is not going well or whatever it is, you got to look yourself in the mirror and you've got to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, how is my attitude? Am I giving myself the best possible possibilities to succeed right now? Because if you have a crap attitude, and if you can't be honest with yourself and realize when you when you're not doing well and when you're not being the best possible version of yourself, uh, you're not going to get um, where you want to be, and you will not perform as David keeps saying um, at a high level or at, as Maya says, you know, with with excellence. Um, so everybody's just got to, as many people say, you got to check yourself. Right? You got to check yourself. Yeah. So I check myself very often, and I am very hard and disciplined on myself, but, but it's, it's important. And all the people around me, you know, my relationship, all of that, uh, they know that I do that. And that actually helps my relationships with them when I'm checking myself, making sure I'm taken care of. Awesome. All right. So to start to wrap it up, any, any other thoughts? We covered a lot here, man. This was a really good conversation. I knew it wasn't going to be 30 minutes. It's a 40, 43 so far. Yeah. you bet. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Should I show I Tank don't... really quick? Yeah, yeah, you got to show yeah. Tank. <laughs> That's great. His name is Tank, but he's like a, he's like a, he's like a cotton he's ball. Grumpy. He's sleeping. So here Wait, we what, go. what kind of dog is this? It's like a Korean dog? Like, yeah, he's from Korea. And he he's from is, Korea. He's a micro Pomeranian. And okay, this is super creepy, but he just went to a new vet. And they found a microchip that no other vet has ever found before. And when they scanned it, they're like, it's a Korean micro microchip that we don't have access to. And we can't remove it unless we were to do like a surgery. And I'm like, um, so are these Korean people like tracking me? Like, you didn't know? If, you, you didn't? No. <laughs> why would they not tell me about a microchip? So it's just a little weird. Like, are they spying on the Americans? I don't know, but it was a little weird to find wait, out. Wait, so Tank is from North Korea or South Korea? South. Wow, a good one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he's from North, he's going to be a spy, you know? <laughs> right? He's a little spy. Uh, that's funny. 
Uh, oh, uh, that is that is great. I love that we just saw Tank, and then I'll end with yeah. just giving giving you David some props. You know, good job with all the content. Thanks for sharing it with all the traders and. Um, you know, you got your discord, you got a lot of good things going. I always end with this. Um, you've provided a lot of value for, for many traders. So kudos you're to you. Yeah, great, thanks you guys. You're a great yeah. contributor, contributor to the FinFoot space. Thanks Maya. Yeah. You guys too. You guys, we're all adding value everywhere we go. So that's great. Um, well, thanks guys for jumping on and yeah. Um, I'll see you guys, uh, around <laughs> tomorrow around fin FinFoot. Cool. Sounds good, David. Kill it the rest of the year. For sure. You guys too. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.